Hello, we're starting a new booklet today. So look for the one that says linear equations and it has this picture on it. All right, once you find it, turn to page two and we're gonna talk about slope. So the slope of a line shows a relationship between two things. Basically, whatever's on the x-axis is being compared to whatever's on the y-axis. And the line is a really quick way to show what amounts match up with which amounts. And let's just do a quick little example here. I love chocolate, so I used to even have a chocolate business. And when I participated in shows, so for instance, I would go down to the senior center, and they would say, oh, can you sell chocolates at the senior center? Oh, yeah, sure. Then I would estimate, I'd have to have them made in advance, so I'd estimate how many I would need. And it turns out, almost across the board, usually about twice as many people wanted milk chocolates, and about half as many people wanted dark chocolates. It also would depend a little bit on the, on the venue. So if I was at the senior center, there might actually be more people wanting dark chocolate. But if I, if I was at an elementary school selling chocolate, there tend to be more people who want milk chocolates. But across the board, milk chocolate was about twice as much, twice as popular. So for instance, you can see that on the graph. So on the bottom it says number of milk chocolates, that's our input. The number of dark chocolates is our output. But it's also really just comparing the two things. So if we have an input of 200, so if I needed 200 milk chocolates, I would probably need, you might say, oh, there's no number there. So notice that this is halfway between 0 and 200, so you put a 100 there. I'm going to label a few of these. Let's see, 50, 150. So this one's spaced out by 50s. And on the bottom here, this is spaced out by 50s also. OK. So here it says, what two things are being compared? So we kind of already talked about that. Dark chocolates, well, number of dark chocolates to the number of milk chocolates. Oh, keep writing the wrong thing. Number of milk chocolates to the number of dark chocolates. And it says here, if I need 200 milk chocolates, how many dark chocolates will I need? Oh, I guess we already talked about that as well. So what you do is you look at the input of 200 for milk chocolates, kind of follow it up until it hits the line, and then go across, and it tells us 100. So you need 100 dark chocolates. OK, now let's talk about the slope. So the slope is that comparison. So it, a lot of times people say rise over run to describe it because you're, it's saying, well, how much do I go up compared to how much do I go over? And it's rise over run. And you can find that by finding the difference in the y values. A lot of times that's represented with y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which I know looks confusing, but it just means you're going to take one point. So if you have two points, well, actually, we'll do an example in just a second. But basically, it's differentiating between the points. So whenever you have a subscript like that, it's just saying that these two make one point, and these two make a separate point. Because one of them has ones, and the other pair of them have twos. OK. So here are the steps to find the slope. Find two points on the line. Subtract the y values in the numerator, which is the top. Then subtract the x values in the denominator, which is the bottom. And then you're going to simplify the fraction. Sometimes it can be left as a decimal. It really depends on your situation. And sometimes it's a whole number if the two numbers divide evenly. Okay, so we're going to find the slope of the line in the chocolate preferences graph. So we're going to have to pick out two points. Let's go back to the graph. How about this one that we already noticed? That one is over 200, so you go over first. 
and then up 100. So it's 200 comma 100. Then let's look at another point. How about this one right here, which is over 100 and up 50. So x is 100 and y is 50. Okay, to find the slope. So if we were to label this officially, we would say x1, y1, x2, y2. And it's actually random. It doesn't matter which point you use first, but you just need to make sure that you line up the same one first. So oftentimes, I'll circle which one I'm going with first. And so you notice I'm using y1 instead of y2. That's okay, as long as I start with x1 on the bottom. So I'm going to say 100 minus 50, because you're subtracting the y values. And on the bottom, make sure you start with this point, 200 minus 100. 100 minus 50 is 50. 200 minus 100 is 100. Now when you simplify that, if you have zeros, you can cross those out and then divide by 5 to get 1 over 2. So we have a slope of 1 half. And today we're just practicing finding the slope, so let's do that a few more times. So find the slope of the line that goes through each pair of points. So just remember x, y, x, y. Go ahead and choose which one you're starting with. Let's start with this one first. M equals, start with the y on top, 3 minus 7 over 8 minus 2. 3 minus 7 is negative 4. 8 minus 2 is positive 6. Now think for a second if there's a number that will divide both of those. And there is. You can divide both of those by 2. So we get negative 2 over 3. And just keep in mind, this is the same as 2 over negative 3 or negative 2 over 3 with the negative right out in front. Those are all the same thing. All right, this time let's start with this point. So I just want to show you that it doesn't matter which point you start with, as long as you start with that one both times. So m equals 9, just make sure you put y's on top, 9 minus negative 1 over negative 5 minus 2. And remember, whenever you have minus a negative, change that to plus a positive. 9 plus 1 is 10. Think of this as negative 5 plus negative 2, which is negative 7. And you can go ahead and leave it like that. There's no number that will divide both. We could change it to a mixed number, but for this assignment, it's fine just to leave it as an improper fraction. Alright, that's it for today, and let me know if you have any questions. Talk to you later.